Dr. Rick Marshall, a scientist who invented a powerful time-warping device, travels to an interdimensional world with two other people. Their adventure starts as an exploration to bring and record evidence of time traveling. However, their journey unexpectedly leads them to a critical mission, and it all depends on Rick to save the universe. In an interdimensional world, a man in an astronaut suit signals his colleagues that he is in distress. Unfortunately, no one on the other end replies until he hears a roar, so he fearfully runs away. Trying to escape, he falls, and a dinosaur catches up to him before eating him alive. On a live broadcast television show called Today, host Matt Lauer introduces Rick Marshall, a paleontologist who just released a new book. The scientist discovered a theory called quantum paleontology, the solution to solving the fossil fuel crisis by time warping. Taken aback, the host doesn't believe in time warps, doubting Rick's claims. Rick assures he's serious about the research and reveals he spent five years working on it with a budget of $50 million from tax Taxpayers. This doesn't impress Matt because Rick spent millions of taxpayer money on research based on the fictitious belief of time warps. Rick is confident that transdimensional energy can solve the energy crisis, but Matt objects, saying his research is nonsense. Hurt by the host's words, Rick storms out, so Matt ends the interview by insulting the researcher. Abruptly, Rick infuriatingly rushes back on screen and tries to attack the host, who sprays him with a fire extinguisher. Three years later, Rick, now a worker at the La Brea Tar Pits Museum, ends his discussion about an invention he made called the Tachyon Amplifier. The device makes one travel in time to another dimension where the past, present, and future all meet. After the kids ask their foolish questions, Rick dismisses them and when they leave, Holly from Cambridge introduces herself to him. The woman commends his work, but the man says he won't finish his research. Holly tries to persuade him to finish the Tachyon Amplifier until Rick interrupts her, saying his research stopped him from his aspiring career, hence his current low-level job. Their conversation doesn't end there when Holly brings out a 265 million years old fossil with an imprint of a lighter. She found it in a desert along with a crystal she made into a necklace pendant that radiates tachyon energy before leaving. Bewildered by the woman's claims, Rick inspects the fossil and sees that it has the exact imprint as his lighter. The next day, Holly finds a disheveled Rick in his office, who's had a food coma from binge eating last night. She then finds out that he finished building the tachyon amplifier, much to her excitement. When Holly turns it on, the device plays a song, and Rick says it's leftover data. Afterward, the woman decides to test the tachyon amplifier and brings him with her. Later, the two arrive at the desert, where Holly found the fossil and crystal. They enter a gimmicky store where the shop owner, Will, tries to sell them souvenirs, but the researchers want to go inside the Devil's Canyon Mystery Cave, so Will offers them a deal to purchase items worth $30, and they can tour the cave. Rick accepts the deal until a man named Ernie enters the store. Will instructs his friend to watch the store while he gives a tour of the cave. Moments later, Will, Holly, and Rick are about to enter the cave, and Will briefs them on the rules. Then, they begin the tour, and Will mentions that the cave is infamous for the alleged lizard man, who eats people and lurks in the dark shadows of the cave. He then signals Ernie to scare the visitors with a lizard man dummy, but the two remain unbothered. Having no reactions, Will gets mad because the two aren't listening to his tour. On the other hand, Rick is focused on his equipment and discovers a strong tachyon reading. When Rick turns on the tachyon amplifier, they experience a strong earthquake, causing it to fall into the water. As the earthquake intensifies, the water current leads them toward a time warp vortex where they get swallowed. Moments later, the trio wakes up in an interdimensional desert with three moons, where they discover a worn-down Viking ship and airplane. Realizing their plan has worked, Rick joyfully insults Matt Lauer for doubting time warping. Afterward, Holly records the historical event, but they realize that the tachyon amplifier is missing, the only device that can bring them back home. Suddenly, they hear primates about to kill another primate on a pedestal structure, so Holly stops them. Then, Will runs up to the primates and threatens them with a fire from his lighter. Not long after, he accidentally burns himself and drops the lighter, which a primate immediately takes. With only one primate left, who was about to get killed, he hides behind the structure, and the trio approaches him. The woman successfully creates a safe space for the primate and communicates with him. Understanding the woman, the primate introduces himself as Chaka, and the rest introduce each other. Meaning no harm, Will checks on Chaka's injured ankle, but the primate fearfully runs away. While the trio chases Chaka, they they all fall into the sand and land in a canyon filled with bones. Chaka frightfully clings to Holly and her chest, so the woman tells him that Rick is a great powerful chief. Chaka then clings onto Rick and takes his wallet, unbeknownst to the doctor. Unexpectedly, a slithering vine grabs onto the four and suspends them on a huge branch. Suddenly, they hear a roar in the distance, and when Rick looks down, he sees an astronaut suit and a pile of bones. Realizing they're about to get eaten, they try to swing to the branch across until a T-Rex appears and bites the vines, making the group fall 
fall. Right after, Chaka runs into the woods, and the trio chase after him to escape. However, Holly wants to snap a photo of the dinosaur as proof of time warping, so she tells Will to stand in front of the dinosaur for scale. After taking the photo, they run after the monkey who crosses the canyon. Just as Rick is about to get eaten, the group reaches the other side with a stone acting as a bridge. Due to the T-Rex's terrible death perception, the dinosaur cannot cross the bridge and leaves. When the paleontologist mentions that the T-Rex's brain is the size of a walnut, the dinosaur angrily jumps on the other side and chases the group. Immediately, the group runs inside a cave where the T-Rex can't get them, so it leaves. Inside the cave, they hear a song playing, so they follow the music, leading them to an abandoned area where they reunite with Chaka. That night, they take shelter in the cave, but Rick refuses to let Chaka stay with them. Will disagrees with the doctor, so Holly communicates with a primate. She learns that Chaka was guilty of defecating in the village water well. Rick still refuses to let Chaka stay, angering the primate. Shortly after, Will carries a chest toward the cave entrance to block it off, but the doctor stops him and says it'll draw more attention. He reiterates that a T-Rex isn't smart enough, and its brain is the size of a walnut until they suddenly hear a loud crash outside. Wary of their surroundings, the group arm themselves with the abandoned weapons from the cave and find a giant walnut at the cave's entrance. In the distance, the T-Rex lurks and spies on the group. The following morning, the paleontologist records himself and plans to eat Chaka if they ever run out of food before finding the tachyon amplifier. Then, Will and Chaka arrive with a bundle of fruits. Rick is suspicious of the fruits, so Chaka cracks one open for the doctor. As the doctor is about to take a bite, spiders come out, scaring the group. Suddenly, they hear a loud sound along with a beaming light, so the group immediately prepares. Rick and Holly spot a beaming light in the forest until a screeching sound strikes Rick. He visions a lizard man asking for help, and he snaps out of it, knowing someone is calling to him before running away. Shortly after, Will suspects the doctor has gone crazy, so they hurriedly chase Rick. Later, Rick arrives at a crystal beacon in the middle of the jungle, followed by the group. Will touches the beacon and sings, finding out his voice has changed. Rick joins him to test it out, and they sing together, but they get interrupted when Chaka tries to warn them. Unable to interpret what Chaka is trying to say, the primate shows Rick multiple lizard men, also known as Sleestacks, menacingly approaching. More Sleestacks approach them with vicious teeth, so Holly uses her belt as brass knuckles. Noticing the reflection from the belt, Rick uses this to reflect light onto the Sleestack statue's eyes. This opens a portal through the beacon, so the group enters, except Chaka. They're transported to a different place where they see Enoch, the Sleestack from Rick's vision. Despite being in the farthest part of the universe, Enoch watched Rick's interview with Matt Lauer. Enoch adds that he's a prisoner of the land of the lost. Only Rick can save the universe from an evil madman called the Zarn, who conquered Enoch's world and plans to conquer the human world. With the power of crystals, the Zarn conquered different worlds, so he must be stopped. When Rick touches the crystals, Enoch warns him not to because they can manipulate time and space. The Zarn only has one thing left to enact his evil plan, the Tachyon Amplifier. The doctor admits he lost the amplifier, and Enoch detects it nearby but can't pinpoint where exactly it is. Later, Rick devises a well-detailed plan to find the tachyon amplifier. He then brings out dinosaur urine and douses himself in the foul liquid to blend in with the wilderness. Holly and Will watch him disgustingly and are hesitant to follow the plan. Unexpectedly, Chaka arrives, so Holly and Will ditch Rick's plan and follow the primate. On their journey, they arrive at a barren land where many structures from different countries and eras on Earth are scattered. Suddenly, an ice cream truck with a man inside falls on the raft they came from. Small dinosaurs surround the truck and viciously attack the man before the T-Rex arrives, along with a female Allosaurus. The two dinosaurs fight for the ice cream man until they notice the group in the distance. Immediately, the dinosaurs chase the group, who all go their separate ways. The T-Rex catches up to Rick and grabs him, but luckily, the doctor escapes. As the Allosaurus looks for him, he pretends to be a mannequin at a worn-down shop. However, the T-Rex finds him, so he runs inside a limousine. Suddenly, the Allosaurus and T-Rex spot him inside and fight for the doctor, unaware that the intelligent man has already escaped. Afterward, Rick, holding a liquid nitrogen tank, instructs Will and Holly at a distance to prepare the catapult near them so the two abide. When Rick arrives, he places the tank on the catapult and launches it into the Allosaurus's mouth, making the dinosaur freeze and die. Shortly after, it blows up, and they find the tachyon amplifier that the Allosaurus swallowed previously. Their excitement instantaneously fades when a pteranodon grabs a small dinosaur holding the amplifier and flies away. Hopeless, Rick gives up, but his friends try to persuade him not to. Holly admits that she never made fun of Rick because he's her role model, despite his controversial interview three years ago. That evening, the group settles 
down, and Rick decides to join them with a banjo. He sings a song while playing the banjo, and as he sings, a mosquito drinks his blood. Unbeknownst to him, it crawls to his back, and Rick faints, revealing the mosquito drank most of his blood. He falls and squishes the mosquito, splattering the blood on the ground. The following day, Rick is determined to save the universe and find the tachyon amplifier. Afterward, they climb their way to the pteranodon's nest, and when they reach the peak, they find the amplifier playing music at the end. Since Will and Chaka refuse to retrieve it, Rick gets it himself. Suddenly, the music stops, causing the dinosaur eggs to hatch. Afraid, Rick sings to calm the baby pteranodons as he walks back to the group. To save Rick, Chaka unexpectedly sings along with a beautiful voice, making the babies fall asleep. In celebration of their achievement in retrieving the amplifier, they rest in a motel pool, and the primate serves the men some fruits. The men drink its juice, but Chaka says it's a narcotic. After several drinks, the men are now high, and Holly goes back to the crystal beacon, where the portal opens to a cave of crystals. Back in the desert, a giant crab approaches Chaka and the men until it falls into a geyser and pops back up, cooked. So the trio eats the crab to cure their hangover. In the cave, Holly takes a dinosaur egg and triggers a recorded message from the Zarn, warning her not to believe in Enoch, the true evil mastermind who killed the Zarn. Suddenly, a sleaze stack captures a frightened Holly. Meanwhile, the men realize Holly is gone, so they go into the cave she was previously in. Nearby, they see two sleaze stacks shed their skins, so the two men wear them as a disguise. At the sleaze stack temple, where Holly is held captive, Rick and Will pretend to be sleaze stacks. However, when Rick shouts his friend's name, a voice warns them that she's being punished in the pit of fire for cooperating with Enoch to retrieve the tachyon amplifier. The two men also learn that Enoch is the true villain, and since they're allies with Enoch, they must die. Immediately, the men throw the sleaze stacks into the fire pit, and the doctor helps Holly out of the cage, saving her life. Holly passionately kisses Rick, and he reciprocates, but then reveals that they sent Chaka to get Enoch. Abruptly, Chaka, Enoch, and his guards arrive, and the villain now has the amplifier. With the crystal's help, Enoch can control the sleaze stacks. Now able to invade Earth, the villain and his henchmen leave to start their plans. Suddenly, the T-Rex arrives, determined to eat Rick, so the doctor tells his friends to leave while he deals with the dinosaur. Holly refuses to leave, so the scientist purposefully angers her, and she leaves. Before Will leaves, he hands Rick a bag of fireworks and apologizes for judging the doctor. With Rick alone, he grabs a staff and faces the T-Rex one-on-one. -on -one. The dinosaur knocks his staff out of hand, so Rick lights a firework, but it disappoints him when it doesn't explode as expected. Frustrated, he drops his lighter, and the T-Rex steps on it, imprinting its shape onto the ground, just like the fossil Holly found. Meanwhile, Holly, Will, and Chaka watch from a distance. With no choice, Rick grabs the staff again and vaults himself inside the dinosaur's mouth, much to the group's dismay. Emotionally, Holly scolds the dinosaur that Rick could have been their future because of his discoveries, but the T-Rex walks away. Soon after, the group head to the beacon portal filled with the Sleaze Stack army, where Enoch is about to enter Earth with the amplifier. An angered Holly unhesitantly fights the lizard men. However, she eventually gets outnumbered. Therefore, Will and Chaka charge at the menacing Sleaze Stacks, until suddenly, the T-Rex arrives with Rick riding the dinosaur. The T-Rex defeats the Sleaze Stacks with ease, and Rick, now friends with the dinosaur, reveals that the T-Rex defecated him out after dislodging an intestinal blockage. Upon defeating the Sleaze Stacks, Rick bids farewell to the T-Rex, and the group enters the beacon portal to Enoch. They find the villain about to enter Earth, so the scientist and lizard man wrestle. Will joins by standing on the floating crystal table and uselessly elbow drops to the floor. The table shakes, causing a crystal to fall off and break, making the portal Earth slowly close forever. So Rick immediately grabs Holly's crystal pendant and places it on the table, opening the portal for a little longer. The three humans rush to the portal until Enoch grabs Will. Will offers to stay with Chaka instead, claiming he never belonged in the real world, and wants to start a new life as he incapacitates the lizard man. On the other hand, Enoch begs for mercy as he doesn't want to live with Will, but the scientist dismisses him. Just as the portal is about to close, Holly and Rick bid farewell to their friends before jumping inside. Finally, back on Earth, the two are ecstatic and are about to kiss, until Ernie asks where his buddy is. The scientist mentions Will is where he belongs, also known as the Land of the Lost. Meanwhile, Will and Chaka find the primate village, and the beautiful women excitedly approach them. A year later, Rick, a remarkable time traveler, is back on Matt Lauer's show for an interview about time warps. The doctor brought Matt a dinosaur egg which Holly got from their trip. Right after, Rick shows the host his latest book titled as an insult for Matt, and the host disdainfully reads it aloud for his show's audience. Angered and defeated, Matt tackles the doctor before the show abruptly goes off air. Unbeknownst to them, the supposed 
exposed to dinosaur egg hatches, which reveals a baby slea stack ready to invade planet Earth. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.